Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another fabulous. I, I can't do it as well as that. Another fab. Oh, geez, here we go again. He's taking his sleeping pills before the show. He's supposed to do it after the show, not before, Smadry. It is another Sunday night snooze, uh, news and nonsense. Uh, I forget which one this is, 16, 17. Anyway, yes, we are back. Hi, Spatry. Hi, how you doing? And yeah, uh, I lost count as to how many of them, and now I'm oh, posting them on I my channel. When we're done, I'll, let, yeah, you're, I'll post them. And you're hosting them on the blog. I think this is number three on my channel for, yeah, I think, for me hosting yeah. them, but yeah. who knows? Who cares? Unity Dash gets a cool new previews feature uh, in Ubuntu 12.10. The cool new feature has landed in the Unity staging PPA for Ubuntu 12.10, a Quanto Quetzal previews uh -huh. and dash and with the new previews feature you'll be able to right click applications or files in dash to get a preview along with some other information which depends on the item you've right clicked good news for people who are using ubuntu yeah. and unity yeah you know, you know i'm really starting to really like unity dare i dare i say more than windows 7 but you know what it's it's easy to use I've gotten mm -hmm. used to it, to it. It is different. I realized when it first came out, a lot of people just didn't like it because it was different. But, you know, sometimes different doesn't have to be like crappy. This one, I, I love it. It's stable, if you know what I mean. So, yeah, wonderful. Yeah. And the thing is, I still say you need to install Arch Linux with uh, Ubuntu, with uh, Unity on it, and then endure all the headaches that I did. <laughs> <laughs> no, that does put me to the air, right? I don't think so, pal. All right, well, moving all on. All right, well, then yeah. Linux Mint 13 for the win, I say. That's fine. I have Linux Mint Mate or Mate or Matey on my ThinkPad, and, and I do hey, like Matey. <laughs> yeah, yeah Matey. Hey, Matey. <laughs> okay, let's see. Well, speaking of Windows, as I mentioned, I heard, I read, I read that the Windows 8 tablet, the Surface versus the Sync, and no, I'm just kidding, the Surface will retail at a starting price point of one ninety nine ninety nine. Gee, I wonder why. Let's guess. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, well, the thing is, the thing is, the the original price they were projecting was ridiculously high, yes. and not only that, but the the demonstration video I saw and I believe it crashed and he had to run back behind the podium and grab another one. So, oops. Yeah. yeah. Oop, whoops is right. And yeah. I wonder if he still has his job. <laughs> well, well, I have no idea, but I will say this. I haven't seen the final pro I mean Windows 8 really we talked about Windows 8 really does look cool on a tablet. It really does. Mm -hmm. Desktop, I don't know. But if if it's ready to roll and I'm then I mean I'm 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 fairly sure that Microsoft will have it, have it ready to go. It looks terrific, and if they can sell it starting at 199 I think it'll sell because it'll give more competition between that and, of course, the Google Nexus 7 tablet, which I guess is selling out. So, yeah, cool. Yeah, well, the the thing is, you know where they're really going to get you is on all the applications and yes. all the other things, yes. the Windows Store and that sort of thing. So, right. And that's probably where they're really going to sock it to you in price. And uneducated consumers <sighs> may, may find themselves paying a lot more for applications. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Um, but I'm just speculating there. Okay, well, more gaming news. Hot off of the Ubuntu Vibes website, there's a 3D RTS game, or real-time strategy, called Planetary Annihilation. That is coming to Linux, and it is inspired by the game Total Annihilation. Hmm. And uh, this time, a... Uh, this game is uh, released by Uber Entertainment with a team of renowned developers who worked on games like Total Annihilation, Command and Conquer, and Supreme Commander. Yeah. A planetary annihilation brings real-time strategy to a new generation of gamers in a way they've never seen before. Total Annihilation inspired gameplay on a planetary scale. If you check out the Ubuntu Vibes website, uh, there is a video on this page where you can look at a really cool preview of this game. I think this is great. Uh, the game um, was on Kickstarter. They have raised $350,000 nice. in two days with 28 days left to reach the target of 900000 So those of you who uh, want to support Linux games can definitely go on Kickstarter and throw, throw a few coins to help out these developers because they are bringing a lot of great games and apps yes. over to the Linux platform. 
Yes. Well, for those of you who follow my channel, you guys know that I don't play Linux games. Of course, I don't play any PC games. My Xbox 360 does the job. As far as Linux games or any games that come out, I, I look for two things. Terrific graphics and a good mm -hmm. storyline. If you have those two, doesn't matter if it's backed by you know Ubuntu, Linux, or Microsoft, or Android. If you have those two things and you price it right, in my opinion, you have a winner. You know, and the thing is, I love what Play, what Play on Linux is doing. They've brought a lot of support for more Windows games to run. And yes. now I have all of my favorite Windows games running in Linux under Wine oh, using Play on cool. Linux. Cool. So that is also another solution out there. But it's great to see developers stepping up to the plate and bringing more games into the Linux ecosphere. You know what? It's it's certainly about fun, but it's probably yes. a bit more about choice and variety. I think it's mm -hmm. great. You know, for me, my Xbox 360 does the job. You know, I I occasionally play Absolutely. online, but for me, it's you know I play Halo and Need for Speed and racing. But yeah, as far as Linux mm -hmm. goes, all you developers, you have a good storyline and great graphics. You have a winner. All right. Exactly. All right. Well, let's move on. I have some other non uh, Linux Windows related some odds and ends. You know me, Spatry, but um, <laughs> uh -oh. here, here we go. Well this is not this is kind of well uh, well it is very high tech and very expensive. The military right. a couple days ago, yeah, the military or, or was it NASA? Maybe it was a I mean a conjunction of both. <laughs> anyway, they tested a new um, futuristic space plane. Uh, this thing was dropped from a B fifty two and it was supposed uh -huh. to go like some ridiculous speed, like 4,000 miles an hour, which means we could, you and I could, could fly to Australia, go see IG, you know, for like breakfast and be back in yeah. the States, you know, for like dinner. That's, <laughs> the, yeah, well, that's the theory. It was supposed to be like a five-minute flight. Well, didn't quite last that long. It lasted like 31 Ooh. seconds. Did it uh, go? Well, th this is what I read. It Everything went off in the beginning without a hitch, but something happened you know something not quite minor well let me put it to you this way one of the tail fins mm. just fell off mm. broke mm. off <laughs> <laughs> the thing crashed into the pacific ocean that goes like five gazillion dollars oh no and uh very expensive i don't know not not now they call this the x51a it makes me wonder what happened to the X1A, the X2A, the X3. What happened to those? Are they in the ocean too? Um, I was kind of hoping for it to be successful because really since the supersonic Concorde, we don't have any super mm -hmm. fast planes commercially flying. And, you know, to go to places like overseas or even in Australia, if you really wanted to go see someone, it'd take <laughs> forever. And this thing, if it was successful sometime in the future, you could get on a supersonic <laughs> flight. I, used scram, I think it's used a scramjet technology. Well, anyway, it didn't work, so sorry. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And I was waiting on you to say that they had Arch Linux powering the onboard computer or something like uh, that. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think this was software-related, so I'll just be <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah, okay. All right. Well, uh, I have some more news on the K desktop environment. The latest release earlier this month of KDE uh, is a solid upgrade that could very well win back the hearts and fingers of Linux users who okay. wandered off to other less powerful desktop shells. Okay. And uh, uh, the uh, writer went on to say that he lost interest in KDE uh, after version 2. And because he felt that it was becoming clunkier to use and uh, too much of a hassle to handle. And with GNOME 3 coming out and Ubuntu Unity environments even less appealing. And then he bounced between Cinnamon and XFCE desktop and alternatives until trying KDE 4.9 released. And the switch uh, has been well worth the effort. Now, the new... KDE brings major updates to the Plasma workspaces, KDE applications, and the KDE platform itself. Along with many new features comes much better stability and performance. For example, earlier versions of KDE on Ubuntu always uh, posed wireless connection troubles mm -hmm. on several of the uh, test computers that the yeah. writer was using. Yeah. This version, however, needed no fiddling to make a wireless connection. Yeah. And KDE it's the most powerful of desktop options for Linux users. Yes. It's heightened eye candy. Compiz still works with the option of using the cube and its extensive desktop 
effects, makes it a big step up from other well, desktop choices. Now, I'm looking at the screenshot of this, and I really love how this looks. It's, it's got a lot of transparency in it. This yeah. looks really professional, and it really looks well, like it really looks like the next generation desktop. So I am actually uh, going to be uh, waiting on a distribution to come out mm -hmm. that I can actually load onto a flash drive yeah. that has the uh, K uh, 4.9 release on it, so I can test it and see how well right. it performs. Right. Yeah. Well, I have tried KDE versions in the past, and as far as it looks, it looks terrific, even slicker mm -hmm. than Windows 7, but never quite as polished as GNOME version, and I mean, like, let alone Windows. And there's just something about KDE with me. It just never seems quite as intuitive, as stable, or as polished. Maybe it's changed. I am not a KDE person. That's why I stick with Ubuntu Unity or Mate or Linux Mint Mate or Zorin. Those I found to be in the long run just more more polished. You know what I mean? But as far as mm -hmm. how it looks, KDE is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. I have one last thing. And this is a. No, we've 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 spoken in the past about the proliferation of smartphones, okay? Yes. Android. Okay, well, apparently a restaurant out west, uh, west of here in the States in California, they're going to offer mm -hmm. you a deal, Spatry. Apparently they are fed up with your meal, your dinner being, or your lunch, whatever, being interrupted with a cell phone call. If you are willing to leave your phone at the door, they will give you a discount off your meal, 5%. Mm. Now, here's the thing. I think, it, now this is an option. You, you don't have to, but let's say... They get busy one weekend and they got like, I don't know, 150 customers and they all leave their phone with the person at the desk. The problem is if, if you don't shut off every single phone right in the, right in the middle, middle of your salad, you, you, you will be hearing all at once 150 mm -hmm. ringers going off at the same time, right? Ding, ling, ling, da, 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 da. So I think, I think it's probably a good idea. I'm not sure if 5% is a big enough incentive, but at least, you know what, all kidding aside, it's nice to be able to go to a restaurant if you really don't want to be bothered by your phone with some, or somebody else's. I think it's good. It's nice to have a choice. You know what? Just take it because if I have it, I'll know I'll, I'll leave it on or I'll forget to turn it off. But yeah, Or maybe there should be restaurants. You want to eat here, mm -hmm. you have to shut off your phone, period. You know, and that is something that is really annoying. For instance, let's say when I go to a sub shop and I have somebody yes. in line in front of me and they're, yes. and they're shooting the breeze on their cell phone while the yeah. server is trying to yeah, right, prepare right. their order and they're sitting there talking on the phone. And that sort of thing. You know, that is really annoying. It's you know? rude. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, yeah, and you know, I wish. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, I wish I just had the gall and say, you know, lady, why don't you put the cell phone? I know. You no, know, and I know. You know, because I mean, that really holds people up and that sort of thing. You know that you know that people have their lives wrapped around their cell phones and right. that sort of thing. I know. You know. And I even find that annoying when I'm at work. You know, and yes. coworkers are tied to their cell phones, texting and that yes. sort of thing, rather than doing their jobs. They're busy. You know, shooting. Yes freeze on the phone or doing texting and that sort of thing. You know right. what? I leave my cell phone at home. I don't want people to bug me when I'm at work, you know? Yeah. So I would have to yeah. agree. I mean, there there's a place and a time, I guess. Obviously, if it's an emergency and you have to take it, I understand. But I'm guessing 90% of the time, you're just being somewhat discourteous. You know what I mean? But I would have to kind of agree on that, Spatry. But you know mm -hmm. what? Hey, People who, those of you who are listening, just be courteous. That's all we ask. There you go. Fair enough. All right, and I've well, got another tidbit for you. Go ahead. VMware, VMware uh, continued its embrace of open source software with its recent acquisition of open source and virtual network provider, Nasira. The move continued... VMware's aggressive M&A strategy and its effort to transition from proprietary software and virtualization to a broader market and cloud computing, largely through open source software. With previous open source software acquisitions that have included Rabbit Technologies, Rabbit MQ Messaging, Zimbra Email and Collaboration, and Springforce, 
VMware seems to have found it paramount to participate and integrate with open source software technology and communities, despite its heritage as strictly proprietary virtualization vendor. Okay. VMware, that's a product that's been around for quite a few years now, hasn't it? Not yes. Mistaken, and, yeah. and the thing is, they do have a version that you can use in Linux for free. That's uh, right. It's their VMware player. Yes. Uh, give you as many options as uh, their uh, regular VMware package. Right. But the thing is, you know, um, it, it's a good option for some people. Personally, I provide, uh, you know, I, I prefer VirtualBox. That seems to, to do the trick really well for okay. me. But it would be really nice if they were to come out with a... Um, open source version of their mm -hmm. virtualization software. I think that would be a wonderful idea. Okay. You know what, Spatchy? I think we will close it out with that piece of software or that piece of news. I have nothing mm -hmm. else at this time, but I will say this uh, before we close this center report out. Don't forget the Linux Zoo Crew every Saturday nights uh, on the Linux Distro community. And, of course, Sunday mm -hmm. nights, uh, the Zoo Crew is 8 p.m., Sunday nights is the live Total OS Today show podcast at 9 p.m. These are both yes. uh, Eastern Time, New York Times. Feel free to join in to listen or maybe even be invited to chat. Uh, we cover, well, Spatra us usually covers Linux topics. I usually cover a wide variety of topics, not just Linux, including, you know, Windows and offbeat stuff. But for that and on that note Spatry that's all I have so yeah and that's all I've got for you guys as well thank you all of you for listening in and we will see you next time in your future arrivederci